Well, Pope Francis, Bishop of Rome, issued a, a new video uh, urging global fraternity, human fraternity. I'm going to run that video, and it, it goes with a recurring theme. If you watch this channel or you follow the, the news around the tweets and the proclamations of Pope Francis in Rome, you realize he's really big into human fraternity, equality, socialist policies, globalism, COVID-19, etc. And the video you're going to see today is an official video. It's actually called, I think they call it the Pope video. And you're going to see uh, people wearing masks. You're going to see a Christian, a Catholic, uh, a Muslim, and a Jew all praying. And then they're all texting each other. And then they all meet up with their masks on and they feed the poor. So we're going to watch that. Before we do, we're going to pray the Our Father. If you'll join me, oremos. In nomine Patris et Fidi et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Pater Noster, qui es in Celi, sanctificetur nomen tuum, adveniat regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicut in cello et in terra. Panam nostrum quotidianum da nobis odie, et emite nobis debita nostra, sicut et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem, Se libera nos amalo. Amen. St. Joseph, pray for us. In nomine Patris et Fidi et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. All right, before I run the video, I just want to go over a Bible verse that every single one of you watching this should memorize. It's John 14, 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Christ alone is the mediator. Christ alone brings us to God the Father. He does that because Christ is fully God and fully man. And because when he assumed a human nature from the immaculate womb of the Virgin Mary, he died on the cross and offered his body and blood on the cross as the propitiation for the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Buddha is not fully God and fully man. Buddha did not offer flesh and blood to, to God. Muhammad did not do that. None of the Hindu deities, Zeus, Hercules, Native American shamans, spirits, Pachamamas, any religion that's ever been in human history, including Satanism, does not provide the bridge and the means to bring sinful humans like me and you to the Father in and through Jesus Christ. Okay, so that's just Christianity 101. That being said, I'm just having a hard time understanding where Pope Francis is coming from. All right, let's run this video. We've got it queued up here on, uh, this is uh, Pontifex, at Pontifex, Pope Francis' Twitter page. And I'm just going to run the video. The translation is, is provided uh, below. He's speaking in, I believe, in Spanish. I didn't check. I was just reading this. The uh, Here it goes. At the service of human fraternity. I'll be quiet now. Al rezar a Dios siguiendo a Jesús, nos unimos como hermanos con los que rezan siguiendo otras culturas, otras tradiciones y otras creencias. Somos hermanos que oramos. La fraternidad nos lleva a abrirnos al Padre de todos y a ver en el otro un hermano, una hermana, para compartir la vida, para sostenerse mutuamente, para amar, para conocer. La Iglesia valora la acción de Dios y en las demás religiones, sin olvidar que para nosotros cristianos la fuente de la dignidad humana y de la fraternidad está en el Evangelio de Jesucristo. Los creyentes debemos volver a nuestras fuentes y concentrarnos en lo que es esencial, lo que es esencial de nuestra fe, la adoración a Dios y el amor al prójimo.
Recemos para que el Señor nos dé la gracia de vivir en plena fraternidad con los hermanos y hermanas de otras religiones y no andar peleando y rezando unos por otros, abriéndonos a todos. All right, let me explain what I what I took away from that video. Maybe you get something different. You got a live stream over there on the right side or below the video if you're on your phone. So what I'm getting from Pope Francis, reading what he says, watching his videos, tweets, and all that, is the idea that it doesn't really matter what your religion is, as long as you are religious. And what we need to do is, is put aside all of our differences, as he said in the video, no fighting with one another. And we need to come together in human fraternity, brotherhood. And then we can serve the poor, we can do acts of mercy, charity, etc. And that's really the, the, well not the, but one of the messages of Pope Francis. Being religious, being spiritual is enough. We're all, to Francis, we're all worshiping the same God, the same transcendence, the same deity. Now, here is where I struggle. Be honest, I struggle. I read church history, history of the church, and right now I'm doing a, a big study of the Arian crisis Pope Liberius, Pope Julius, St. Athanasius, the UC being an Arian party, Constantius II, this whole struggle. And I'm seeing Catholic lay people, priests, and bishops in the 300s over one word, consubstantial, homoousia, they are being tortured. They're being exiled. Um, Liberius, the Pope, is being uh, cast out. Another Pope, anti-Pope, Felix II, is brought in. The Empire is involved. Constantius II, son of Constantine, is involved. It's a, it's a big battle. over whether Christ is consubstantial and co-eternal with the Father. But the Pope of 2021, Happy New Year, everyone, all this stuff, you can even say if you're a Muslim that Christ isn't the Son of God. If you're a Jew, you can say with the Talmud that Christ is an imposter, a false prophet. You can ridicule Christ. You can say Christ is not the Son of God. You can say he's not the Messiah, which the Jews say. But it's all good. You text me some hands praying, and I'll text you some hands praying. And that's that. And I just don't understand how that theology would fit in the 300s when everyone is spilling their blood and going thousands of miles in exile and traveling, councils, according to legend, St. Nicholas punching Arius, the H slap, all this going on. And now we're told in 2021, it doesn't matter. I want to go back to the video because there's a few things in the video that I wanted to, to point out. Again, I'm just struggling here. This time I'm going to talk over the video. I hope you don't mind. I wanted to give you a full run. Okay, when we pray to God following Jesus, we come together as brothers and sisters. Isn't that true? I agree. That is true. And I like how she's holding a rosary. You should pray the rosary every day. You're not a team. We've got a candle. Got a little holy card here. It's obviously kind of set up, but okay, whatever. Here we go. 
with those who pray according to other cultures, other traditions, and other beliefs. Okay, so here's the problem. And I just I just said it, but I got to say it again. And we got a woman here. She's a Muslim. She's on her prayer carpet. That you can't come to the Father except through Jesus. You see, as Catholics, we think that what unites humanity is Jesus, not fraternity, not helping poor people, not help serving the homeless. All that's good. We need to do all of that. All of us should do it. But it's not human fraternity. Like I said in another video, it's not the idea that we're all sons of Adam and Eve that unites us. Adam and Eve was what brought sin and death into the world. What can unite us, that relationship is broken and pushed outside the garden of Eden. What can bring us together is the fruit of the new tree, the fruit of the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Jesus Christ, who offers his flesh for the life of the world. And it's in Christ, who's the new Adam, that we find remission of sin, both original and actual. And we receive the graces to be incorporated into Christ, who is the God-man and the Redeemer, and then brought into the presence of God the Father. As I have in this Bible verse right here, John 14, 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Period. No exceptions. Okay, so let's continue with this video. This is where, I mean, he starts off on a good moment. Yeah, when through Jesus Christ, we're brothers and sisters. And then, with those who pray according to other cultures, other traditions, and other beliefs. What about someone who worships Zeus or worships Juno or worships Thor or worships Satan? It doesn't work. It doesn't fit with Christianity. Otras culturas, otras tradiciones y otras creencias. Somos hermanos que oramos. La fraternidad nos lleva a abrir Fraternity leads us to open ourselves to the Father of all and to see in the other. Al Padre de todos y a ver en el otro un hermano, una hermana. A brother or sister to share our lives or to support, to love, and to know each other. Okay, so here's really, I think, the, the problem that I, as a Catholic, as a Christian, I can't get on board with this video with Francis or with Francis' teaching is that he says it's fraternity that allows us to enter into this, I think we both would say, supernatural life of charity, love of God, love our neighbor. It's not this idea of fraternity. It's actually a person, Jesus Christ. And when you have a Muslim and a Jew on camera while you're saying this, what you're saying is, is it's not Jesus that brings us all together. It's something else. It's fraternity. So by, by saying these things and having the Muslim praying and the, and the Jewish man praying and saying this, you are explicitly stating that it is not Jesus that's the unifying factor in our lives because we're showcasing people who reject Christ. Let me, let me uh, put it back on the screen. Para compartir la vida, para sostenerse mutuamente, para amar, para conocer. La iglesia valora la acción de Dios. Okay. The church values God's action in other religions without forgetting that for us Christians, is that just our perspective? En las demás religiones, sin olvidar que para nosotros cristianos, la fuente de la dignidad humana. The wellspring of human dignity and fraternity is in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, it's not just for us Christians that that's true. It's for all humans. It's not just that that's our perspective that we would like you to know, hey, this is our perspective. No, it's true whether you are an atheist or a Jew or a Muslim or a Buddhist or, or whatever religion you, you subscribe to, it's true that human dignity and fraternity is in the gospel of Jesus Christ, not just for us Christians, which is what he said in this clip. Let's keep going. La humana y de la fraternidad está en el Evangelio de Jesucristo. Los creyentes debemos volver a nuestras fuentes y concentrarnos en lo que es esencial, lo que es esencial de nuestra fe.
So what we see here, okay, what is essential to our faith is the adoration of God and love of neighbor. So what he's saying is what is essential to our faith, not faiths, plural, but one faith. And he's including here the praying hands of the Christian lady, the praying hands of the Muslim, and the praying hand of the Jewish man. What is essential to our faith is the adoration of God and love of neighbor. But what about Jesus Christ? Is that essential to our uh, to our faith? Adoración a Dios y el amor al prójimo. Decimos para que el Señor nos dé la gracia de vivir en plena fraternidad con los hermanos. Okay, I got a pause here. Just this is just a pet peeve. So, in Texas, we use these things. We call them turkey fryers. These are big gas burners, and uh, we use them to brew beer and to fry things like turkeys. So she's holding it here. Now the problem is, is you can't put one of these on a plastic table. As soon as I saw this, I was like, "What? This is bogus." Watch this. They put out a plastic. Sorry, this is completely incidental to theology. Or Francis, or anything, but I just thought this was kind of kind of lame. So no, no, they bring de vivir out the plastic table, and then they put a the fryer hermanos. burner on it. There's no way it's going to melt right into the table. That just doesn't work. You can't can't fire up a a propane heater, uh, a gas element like that on a plastic table. It's going to melt. De otra religión, no andar so we have all three: the Muslim lady, the Catholic lady, and the Jewish man. They're all. They're cooking on a plastic top and they're, and they're feeding the poor, which is great. Feeding the poor is awesome. Jesus said we must feed the poor. Matthew 25, we have to do it. Rezando unos por otros, abriéndonos a todos. Okay. So the theme here is that we're all praying for each other and we're all working with each other to, to feed the poor, to do something good. But the distinctive element of being a disciple of Jesus Christ is following Jesus Christ. The reason that we feed the poor, Christ said to, that you do it to the least of these, you do it to me. Those in heaven will say, Lord, when did we feed you? When did we give you, give you something to drink when you were thirsty? When did we visit you? When did we clothe you? And Christ says to them, Matthew 25, that when you did it to the least of these, you did it to me. So the wellspring of Christian charity is from Christ and back to Christ. And in this video, we, we see the three characters or the three actors praying. Um, the Muslim and the Jewish are praying not through Christ. The, the Catholic one's praying the rosary. So she is praying through Christ. And, and Francis is saying, you know, what's, what's essential is the fraternity that I'm not going to get in a dialogue or a discussion or even, God forbid, a debate that would try to proselytize you or convince you that the Islamic way is wrong and that the Christian way is right. What's important is we lay aside all those differences. This is the Freemasonic part. We lay aside all these differences and we go and we put the turkey burner on a plastic table and we cook some soup and we hand it to people in plastic bags. Now, before I close, when you read Catholic history, we have we're going to come to two conclusions. When you read in the 300s about all this fighting over Arianism and is Christ truly God? Was he created? Is he consubstantial with the Father? Is he co-eternal? Then we get into debates over the Nestorian crisis. Is Christ two persons? Is he one person? Does he have a human nature? Is the human nature absorbed? People are getting tortured, exiled, martyred all over the place. And then Islam comes onto the scene in the 600s. And you have thousands since then of Catholics who have been cut up by the sword of Muhammad because they profess Christ. I want to share a quote with you on the screen. This quote is from St. Aurelius, Felix, George, and Liliosa, and Natalia from 852. They were martyrs in Cordoba, Spain, under the Muslims. And here's the quote. Any cult which denies the divinity of Christ, does not profess the existence of the Holy Trinity, refutes baptism, defames Christians, and derog 
or derogates the priesthood, we consider to be damned, end quote. Okay, so here you have Muslims killing Christians, and you have Christians saying back, we consider your religion damned. How would the Muslims in that scenario perceive what Francis is trying to teach in this video in 2021? And then how would the Catholics perceive this video in 2020, 2021 of a pope? If they would say that we believe your religion is damned. Like if a Muslim texted them the prayer hands, would St. Aurelius and Felix and Jordan be like, awesome, thanks guys, very sweet of you. Or would they be like, whoa, whoa, y'all try to kill us and we think your religion is damned. I mean, what would a crusader in the 1200s who was marching towards Jerusalem, if he saw a pope make this video, what would happen to the brain molecules of that crusader in the 1200s? So what I'm trying to get to, and I'm going to close on this, is there is a contradiction. And, I, and Francis is aware of this. There's a contradiction of the way Christians understood Christianity as it relates to the rest of the world. And that, that posture was based on John 14, 6, that we can only have salvation and redemption through Jesus Christ. He's the way, the truth, and the life. If you don't have Jesus Christ in the proper Orthodox, Biblical, Catholic doctrine of who Jesus is, not like the Mormons, not like the Arians, not like the Jehovah's Witnesses, but the real one. If you don't have that, nothing else is going to fall into place. So you can't ignore it. That's what's key and that's what's essential. The 2021 message is, let's forget all of that. Fire up the turkey fryer on the plastic table, which is fake. And let's feed the poor. And that's... That's what we should do as Christians. So, you know, I guess the question is, the final question is, we believe in God, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. For the past 1900 so years, was the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost upset and frustrated that Christians were debating and arguing dogma and liturgy and theology and um, crossing swords with Mohammedan armies and fighting the battle of Lepanto and all these things was, was got up there upset and saying, you know, once we get to the year 2000 abouts or the 1960s, we'll finally get some popes who are merciful and they'll teach the baptized people chill out don't worry about dogma. Don't worry about differences. Let's begin to focus on human fraternity. Is that how God was thinking all those times? Or is it the other way around? Is it that God passionately wanted all humans to come together in his son, Jesus Christ, his only begotten son, and that every dogma and every doctrine and every word were important to God and that he favored and blessed men like St. Nicholas and St. Athanasius and St. Cyril and St. John Damascene and St. Thomas Aquinas and St. Pius V. And now we're at a moment where he looks down and he sees popes and hierarchy who are saying everything that all those great Christians did before was ridiculous. What we really need to do is get on board with what was initiated in, in the in the in the French Revolution, but in a nonviolent way. Fraternity, equality, the generic goals, and we don't need Jesus Christ at the center of it. For us Christians, we always say, for us Christians, that's what Pope Francis would say, for us Christians it's important, but we realize that for mo most people it's not important, and that's okay. We're going to move forward with praying each other, sending little meme, or not meme, what are they, get? Oh, no, not gifts, what are those? What are those? Emojis. 
uh, we're, we're sending little emo emojis to each other and we're helping the poor and all that dogma and doctrine and all that. Don't worry about it. It's a contradiction. Francis knows it's a contradiction. You know it's a contradiction. And if we were able to bring any of the doctors of the church or great saints like St. Saint Athanasius to our time period in 2021 and were to show them a video like that, they would say that's a contradiction. And the answer is, it's a contradiction. What do we do about it in 2021? I don't know. I don't know. I think since 2019 or 2018 into 19, when I wrote the book Infiltration, I think there's things I would change about that book now, but I think I did a good job diagnosing the historical progress and problem. And in the end of the book, I say, look, let's recognize and let's resist and let's keep true to the traditional Orthodox Catholic faith. But beyond that, of praying the rosary every day, and you should pray the rosary every day in 2021, and reading the Bible and attending the traditional Latin Mass, the Holy Sacrifice, the Mass, all the things we talk about here. What do we do except just to say Rome is eclipsed, the Pope is in contradiction with the previous position, doctrine, morality, game plan of the great saints and church fathers before us. It's just a contradiction. It's not even an evolution or a development or anything like that. It's just a flat contradiction. Well, the one thing we know we can do is pray. And so we'll pray the Ave Maria. And a glory be together. Oremos. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, or pro nobis peccatoribus, nunca de tora mortis nostre. Amen. Gloria Patri et Filio, Spiritui Sancto, sicuterat in principio, et nunc et semper, et in secula, seculorum. Amen. St. Joseph, pray for us. In nomine Patris, et Filii, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. All right. Well, keep praying. Pray the rosary every day. If you don't pray the rosary, you're not on the team. I'd like to encourage you also to read the Bible every single day. There's a plan over at the New St. Thomas Institute, how to read the Catholic Bible in a whole year. I also have a video on every single book of the Catholic Bible from the Catholic perspective. It's over at NewStThomas.com. I think the new year is a time to commit to that. You might say, well, already five days into the new year. No big deal. you got plenty of time. you got 360 days. You need to get on a study of plan. I'm not saying necessarily it should be my study over at the NewStThomas.com, but you need something to guide you and, to, and mainly, I think, to keep you disciplined, to keep you on track. So, Check that out at NewStThomas.com. Of course, there's all the liturgy studies as well, apologetics, theology, uh, Thomas Aquinas, philosophy, and all that. So read the Bible. Get on a plan. Get deep. You need to know your faith. You need to be able to know your teacher faith. That's the only consolation, even when things are really hard politically and in the church. And that's what's going to keep us focused. I'm not saying that every single day is going to be holly and jolly and easy. I struggle too. I'm struggling now. It's a, in the church, in the pol political realm, it's a rough, rough time. We got COVID. We got crazy election in the U.S. We got a Pope putting out this video. We got vaccines. We got perhaps closures of mass in America. I know there's already been closures across the sea. It's tough. It's tough. But let's stick with Jesus Christ. He says, John 14, 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. And remember, our Lord Jesus Christ said, you're the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So go out there and be salty. <laughs>